we're going to identify the types of intermolecular forces that are present in three molecules. They are dimethyl ether, CH3OCH3, methanol, CH3OH, and carbon dioxide, CO2. If you're new to intermolecular forces, you might want to check out the video on the three types of intermolecular forces first. I'll place the link in the description box below, and you can come back here when you're ready. Let's start with the first one, CH3OCH3. It's an ether that looks like this. We have an electronegative atom, which is oxygen, present in this molecule. However, we don't have any hydrogen that's directly attached to that oxygen. So that means there won't be any hydrogen bonding present between this ether molecule. Now, because of that electronegative oxygen in the molecule, we have a permanent dipole present. On the top part of the molecule, the charge distribution is partially negative because of that lone pair on the oxygen. On the remaining part of the molecule, we have partial positive. The reason being, carbon is less electronegative than oxygen, and hydrogen is less electronegative than carbon. So therefore, the parts on the left, bottom, and right of this molecule are basically partially positive. Only the top part, where the oxygen is located, is partially negative. So because of that, we have permanent dipole. So now imagine we have another dimethyl ether right above it, like that. We now have an attraction between the partial positive and the partial negative of these two molecules. This type of attraction is called dipole-dipole interactions. As with all substances, we will definitely have the interaction between the nonpolar portion of the molecule, and that means we also have London dispersion forces present in this molecule. So in total, for dimethyl ether, CH3OCH3, we have two types of intermolecular forces present, dipole-dipole interactions and London dispersion forces. Now let's move on to the next molecule, which is methanol. It's an alcohol that looks like this. Now let's imagine we have another methanol right next to it. Since we have a hydrogen that is directly connected to that oxygen, that means hydrogen bonding is present between the two molecules. Since we do have an electronegative atom, which is that oxygen, that creates a partial positive charge on the molecule, and then the rest of the molecule is partially positive. So that creates a permanent dipole within each of the methanol molecule, and that attraction between the opposing charge, delta positive and delta negative, like that, that's the dipole-dipole interaction. And then we do have like certain parts of the molecule whereby it's nonpolar and nonpolar. Like the hydrogens on the first methanol and the hydrogen on the second methanol, there is a weak interaction between these two molecules. And that weak interaction is called the London dispersion force, which is present in basically all the substances. So all in all, in methanol, we actually have three intermolecular forces present. Hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interaction, and London dispersion forces. Now we move on to the final molecule, which is carbon dioxide. It's a linear molecule. We have oxygen, which is electronegative on both ends of the molecule. However, there's no hydrogen attached to that oxygen. So that means we don't have any hydrogen bonding present. Since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, we have a dipole pointing towards oxygens like this. Since we have two equal dipoles and they're pointing away from each other like this, they cancel out, and that means there's no permanent dipole in this molecule. So since there's no permanent dipole, that means we don't have any dipole-dipole interaction present within carbon dioxide. Since CO2 is a non-polar molecule, that leaves us with only London dispersion force that's present in this molecule. So sometimes people may get this wrong because carbon-oxygen bond is a polar covalent bond Confusion might cause someone to think that there is a dipole-dipole interaction present in CO2. However, just keep in mind that it is not because in order for you to have dipole-dipole interaction, you need to have an overall net dipole present in a molecule, which means that molecule has to be polar. So if CO2, even though CO bond is polar, the whole entire molecule is non-polar. So if it's non-polar, there's no permanent dipole, that translates to no dipole-dipole interaction. So since the whole molecule is nonpolar, 
That means we are only left with London dispersion force present in CO2. So with that, we're done identifying the different types of intermolecular forces that are present in dimethyl ether, methanol, and carbon dioxide. Here's a video that I've handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.